Hello everybody. Today we are going to review the movie The Badland, or, or maybe it's just called Badland. Hold on, hold on a second. <clears throat> it's either The Badland or Badland. Now I'm, now I might, now I think I'm forgetting what it's actually called. Oh, it's just called Badland. See, uh -huh, I'm glad I, I'm glad I clicked on the, uh, clicked into that again just to make sure that I wasn't screwing up the title. So we are reviewing just Badland, not the Badland, to get that, to get that mistaken. Um, so I thought Trace Atkins had a more, um, I guess a bigger, bigger role in this movie, but he, he was literally only in it for like about five minutes at the very beginning, um, which was kind of disappointing because I was hoping to see him a little bit more in this movie, but I mean, I guess he wasn't really a huge character in the movie, so it didn't really matter too much. Uh, he wasn't like the forefront of this movie. Now, I don't know whether he's been in any other Western type movies or not, but he fit his character uh, very well, I will say that. Now, has he been in any other like Western movies besides that one? Maybe it was The Outsider. That I'm thinking of. Or Hickok. It could be that one too. Oh my god, he's been in quite a few. Stagecoach something. Stagecoach, the Texas Jack story. Hmm. I don't know. Wow, he's been in apparently quite a few westerns. Okay, well... Who knows then what other one I'm thinking of that I've seen him in. Uh, now, I didn't sit through that film the whole way through, but maybe it was this one that I've seen him in, and I just kind of remember the opening scene of the movie, because my parents, I believe, did see this one, and I just kind of happened to be up there when they were watching it. <clears throat> um, so, uh, he is a Confederate war general. Anyway, that's... And this guy named Matthias Breacher is there to hunt him down and kill him. Or I guess, technically not, I guess he's not a bounty hunter. He's, um, not a bounty hunter. He's a, hmm, oh my god, detective. Jeez, I couldn't think of it. Uh, so he doesn't, I guess, technically just l kill them for sport just to bring them in dead or alive. He's actually meant to bring them in and hang them in the name of the law if they won't go quietly. I guess he has to take... Oh, I hate that feeling when you feel like you're going to sneeze and then you can't. Whew. Bear with me for a second. Okay, I think we're okay. We're back. Um, so, as I was saying... Uh, he isn't meant to just, you know, kill them. He's supposed to provide, or he's supposed to kill them in the name of the law, I guess, or however the law tells him to do it. Um, he's not just supposed to kill them in cold blood. He's supposed to follow, abide by the laws, and kill them in the name of the law, I guess, is what his whole duty is. Um, obviously, none of these... Uh, well, uh, not all of them, but most of them uh, aren't going to go quietly, right? Because he was he was fighting for the other side, uh, the North, I suppose. Uh, just from just judging from the way they were talking in the very beginning of the film, and obviously Trace Atkins' character, um, Corbin, was fighting for the South. So they had very different. Um, very different ideals, let's just say that much. Uh, so, it doesn't end well for the, for General Corbin, let's just say that much. Uh, now, it, now, I thought for sure that he was going to get away, or that um, Matthias was just going to leave it be, and walk away from the situation, because there was so, so many more men than him, but he ends up just being like the fastest hand in the West all of a sudden, with no real telltale signs of that. Um, and it was just like, holy crap, like, and I found, 
um, throughout the movie that... Um, actually, I don't want to get into that quite yet. So, uh, then he is off to his next victim, uh, Reginald Cook. And Matthias Breacher was played by Kevin Makeley, who I've never... I don't think I've ever seen him in anything. Actually, I thought it was Hugh Jackman, <laughs> to be honest, when I first started, when I saw the trailer for this. I had to kind of do, like, a double take. It was like, Hugh Jackman in a Western? Um, that's different, but... Anyhow, what? not Hugh Jackman. Let's just say that much. Uh, so he goes after this guy named Reginald Cook, who was, I guess, another obvious... Uh... Now, I don't know whether he was a general or what he referred to him as, but he obviously fought in the war for the South, so he's a Confederate soldier who did a lot of bad things. Um, and he's kind of competing with this other, I guess, detective, or maybe it was a bounty hunter, uh, Harlan Red, played by Wes Studi. And, uh... Oh, my nose, man. Um... And he talks about how they might have to cross paths one day, obviously, and uh, Matthias just said, well, if we have to, let that let whoever loses their death be uh, quick, in, in a roundabout way. Because um, I can't, I don't want to quote him word for word, because I'm going to screw up that line. But um, So when he gets to uh, Reginald's house, he meets his daughter Sarah, played by Mira, Mira Sorvino. Um, and obviously, you're not really expecting him to stay there, have to stay there as long as he does. Uh, and they did this story in chapters, so it kind of introduces each character as you go, so I guess it makes sense that maybe certain characters didn't make it as long as you thought they were going to. Um, so, uh, Reginald wants to die, um, in his own way, but Matthias won't obviously let him do that. Uh, I found it kind of funny that Sarah let him in, and then even after finding out that he was a detective and that he was supposed to carry out this job, um, but he ends up letting uh, Reginald die in his own way. Um, I thought it was kind of funny that Sarah even let him stay after knowing that, um, but she does. She obviously falls in love with him because, um, and he falls in love with her. I guess maybe because he showed that he had a little bit of good in him. Um, he didn't really like having to... He didn't like his job. He didn't like carrying out the violence. Um, but he was afraid of what he would become if he didn't have that in his life anymore, I guess. And it definitely shows at the very end of the movie like how dark he can really be. Um, so after... Uh, Reginald dies due to the hands of this man named uh, Fred Quaid, who wants Sarah's land, um, and now that her father is dying, he thinks he can just take it easily, but he keeps getting turned around by her, and that's when Matthias steps in the way and tries to make a deal with him. Obviously, Quaid isn't going to go with that deal, and he comes back and tries to kill all three of them, ends up killing the father, and so I guess it was in a, a good kind of thing for the father anyway because he wanted to die in his own terms, so he got to do that instead of just laying on his back and dying of natural causes. He didn't want to go out that way. Um, so, then he has to carry out, Matthias decides to go and carry out his one last contract on this man named... Huxley Wainwright, who was the owner of this little town called, it was either Knife's Point or Knife's Edge, one of the two. Um, so I guess, and uh, this guy, uh, he was played by Jeff Fahey, who I've seen in other stuff, but I can't remember what exactly, so let's actually look that up, because, um, oh, he wasn't lost, I guess. Oh, Alita Battle Angel, okay. What else have I seen him in? Oh, NCIS. Oh, wow. Okay, so he's been in quite a bit that I've seen. Something else that I'm really thinking of. Oh, yeah. He was in Hell, Hell on Wheels. Okay. Um, what else was he in, though? Something... Oh, he was from, in, from Dust Till Dawn. 
okay. So I've seen them in quite a bit. Something else, oh, Justified, right. Oh my god, and he was in Grimm too? Oh wow, okay, so he's been in a lot of stuff that I've watched in the past. Uh, but there's one thing I'm thinking of in particular, I think. Don't know whether I'll be able to find it, though. Hmm. Well, we're way back into 2012, so... Unless it's a it must be really old, with whatever I'm thinking of. Oh, he was in Machete in 2010. Whenever the third part of that's going to come out, I'm still wait still waiting on something else to be said about that. Oh, he wasn't Planet... Oh, Planet Terror, right? Right, right, right. That's what I'm recognizing him from then. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so now I've kind of rambled on about him. But anyway. Uh, so he, I guess, is a good read of character. And he obviously knows that Matthias isn't just there passing through. Uh, so he ends up uh, trying to bury him alive. Which is a very failed attempt. I don't know why he wouldn't have just shot him right there when he had him in his sights. Because Matthias seems to be able to get out of really bad situations somehow, some way. Um, I guess he kind of has luck on his side. Uh, and he gets out of this yet again. Um, when they go to, he wakes up uh, to the sound of them shoveling his grave because they're going to bury him alive. And then he takes uh, the one guy's gun and shoots them both and they end up falling into the grave. So then he goes back to the town and they have this big, huge... It's a very classic Western feel. They have this big, huge gunfight at the very end of the film between all of uh, Wainwright's deputies, and then they have this super cheesy kind of, um, you know, the typical, like, showdown style where they both draw their pistols and they somehow both shoot each other. Um, but Matthias shoots Wainwright in the heart, and Wainwright shoots Matthias in the stomach, which would be a horrible way to go because a gut shot could hit literally any one of your organs and puncture it and do some serious damage to your uh, insides because you'd have internal bleeding as well as external bleeding so it'd be a horrible way to go at least Matthias aim for something that's just going to wipe you out instantly right um, so then he gives the town over to this other woman that he met in the town and her name was Alice Alice Hollenbeck, played by Amanda Weiss, and she was basically in control of this, I guess, brothel, you would call it back then, wouldn't you? Um, and, and she owned the bar, so she owned this bar slash brothel type deal. And anyway, Matthias ends up killing Wainwright and ki gives, uh, gives her the town. So now she's, so now she's sheriff, uh, because... Wainwright, or Matthias says to Wainwright that uh, wearing a badge isn't something you're just, you just take, it's earned. And clearly, obviously, Wainwright just took over the town, right? So, <clears throat> um, because it was a mining town when I guess he first started. So, there you go. Um, now, my only, my one big criticism of this film, actually, is that Matthias seems almost superhuman to the rest of the um, to the rest of the people that he's fighting. Uh, now I know obviously he fought in the war, so he'd probably be a better shot than most people, but it almost seemed like he didn't really have to face too much adversity until kind of the very end of the film. He just seemed to be so much better than everybody else that it was almost like an unfair fight regardless. And most Westerns, where even the guys are extremely good gunslingers, they still end up getting, you know... Um, they still end up get, getting hurt most of the time, even if they're extremely good at what they do. Because you've got, like, so many bullets flying at you. And there was plenty of times where he should have probably died and somehow was just able to, I don't know, the bullets just missed him. It seemed kind of like unlikely that every single shot from somebody, including some of the weaponry that they were using, would miss or even not like graze him or at least do some sort of damage to him. So he seemed almost like too superhuman in this movie. And that was kind of the one downfall. Um, 
the storyline was good though. Um, the love interest wasn't really expected actually, which was kind of nice for a change. It was kind of like, it didn't seem forced. It was kind of just like two people meeting and they just happened to kind of fall in love and you, and obviously you didn't really know if he was going to go back to her. You kind of had that feeling, but he does go back to her at the beginning of the movie or the end of the movie, he goes back to Sarah. So now I'm not really sure whether he dies at the end or it was just supposed to be like keeping you guessing as to what happens between the two of them. I'm not really sure. I wish they had to touch on it just a little. This movie could have been a little bit longer, like maybe about five more minutes would have been nice. But anyhow, I guess leaving some mystery kind of makes sense because I guess maybe he was a little bit of a man of mystery himself. But I would say the huge downfall to this was what I just talked about. So uh, I gave it a 7 out of 10 because of that, because I felt like it kind of made the film plummet quite a bit, actually, as compared to some films where it kind of seems more evenly matched. He seemed just, yeah, just a little bit, just a slightly bit too good at what he was doing. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think, I mean, there are people that are really, really good shots, but it just seemed too much of an advantage for him. Uh, so, that's all I can say about this film. So, as always, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this film if you've seen it. Uh, when I am filming this, it is on Netflix um, till September 25th, but by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be off of Netflix. Um, but I know Netflix does this thing where they kind of just like filter stuff out and then bring it back randomly. So I'm sure it'll make a return at some point. Uh, not really sure why they're taking it off. Maybe just because they want people to watch some of their newer stuff. Cause I know they've got a lot of stuff coming out this year. Um, as far as new movies go, I think they have like one, one big title every month or, or something like that, that. I don't know, there's some project with The Rock, Ryan Reynolds, and somebody else they're doing with Netflix right now, so I know they have movies coming out, like, one every month, I believe it's supposed to be. Now, I'm not sure whether that's already started or whether that's going to be starting soon, so maybe that's why they're removing some of the older stuff so that you'll watch some of the newer things that are coming to Netflix instead of constantly going backwards. It could be That could be. But uh, anyway, still, go out and watch this film. Uh, I'm sure it's probably going to be available on another platform, or you could probably buy it on, or download it. You could probably buy it or download it from somewhere, I'm sure. I'm sure you can find it somewhere, or go to a Walmart. It's probably like five. It's probably in the $5 bin. <laughs> I, I can almost guarantee you this movie would be in a $5 bin, just because it's like the classic type of Western movie. And it was still a good watch for the storyline and stuff, but... It just seemed one-sided, again, like I said. And I will stop talking now because I'm just repeating myself. So I will see you guys in the next one, and bye-bye for now.